All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to Kickstarter Radio 102.4. I'm your host, Lipstick Patty, and today this is the live show. Yes, indeed. On today's show, we will be looking at Stop the Train, the High Speed Adventure. Ooh. Also, Sea of Nadia. Man, pirate games are certainly popular. Railroad Inc. Challenge. Yes, we will be looking at that too. Oh, yes. Also, the Phantom the Card game. Very exciting. And um, also, Send It. Strange name, Send It, isn't it? Because it's a mountain biking board game. Why, why does it say Send It? I don't know. And uh, our final thing we'll be looking at today is... NFL. I think that's his name. NFL International or something. Which is a super indie game. And it's come out with the power of 3D printing by the looks of it from a two people person team. But um, also, after the live stream, we. Right after the live stream, we'll be publishing this new series. It's the Versus series. We are putting adventures in Neverland up against the legend. And um, it will have our movie voice, which is kind of welcome to the series versus. So it's in that kind of voice, a bit more entertaining, and it's very short as well. So it's good for live. Um, g- good short form. Anyhow. All right, very good. So there's the six. We need to get these booted. So you have to excuse me while I get these ready as we came a bit late. And yes, I have a hundred thousand of these. We've got to stop the train first. Ding, 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 ding. They're looking for the bottom of a full screen. Ah, stop the, stop the train! It's exclamation mark! Stop the train! Oh, what's happening to the train? Looks like there's a bomb on it. Paris here. I love Paris. We love Paris the moon and we've got some looks like spitfires maybe i don't know they can't be spitfires they've got the um german logo on um i can't remember the name of these planes does it matter does it matter anyway it's coming from london it says uk let's have a look at this it's a social deduction game um all right, social deduction then. So it's, is it going to be like Murder on the Express kind of thing, but there's a bomb instead? It's a 1905 to Paris. is armed with a bomb and it's hurling towards its destination. Bum, bum, bam. Um, to avert disaster, you only have one hope, an emergency meeting to identify the saboteur and throw him off. Throw him off? <laughs> You're going to just throw him off the train? Can you not arrest him? But yeah, it says it needs four to six players. Four to six players. All right. But it says it's fairly quick, so interesting. What's it's got like a railway components that you build. What is this about? This is quite nice with the speed of the train. I do like that. You've got your permits and things like that, and you've got your own cards. Looks like... Um, does, look, does look interesting. 66 effect cards that can change the speedometer. Ooh. So is this what it looks like on the table? For, or can you change it to have different scenarios? Um, it does look cool though, I do like how it's set out, and you can see that's going over a bridge here, maybe a tunnel here and here. Um, how's it doing anyway? We, uh, my eyes, I can only look at one thing at a time. 700 backers, not too shabby. Double its pledge goal. We are apologising because we can't log into, um, can't log in at the minute to Kickstarter, so it's showing Mexican because we're in Mexico. So I'm going to hover over this slowly. Oh not working it hardly ever works this show me the currency when you hover over that is weird isn't it kickstarter oi get on get on it <laughs> um anyhow it does look interesting um 
couple of missions that you got to do. Stop the train and then you've got a character specific objective which is nice. We do like the card art here. It's very noir-esque. Um, and um, yeah, so it's kind of putting it in that kind of, in kind of World War II era. We like the fact that it's not gone black and white. There is a hint here of, is it pink? I don't know what this shade that they've mixed in with it is, but it's kind of cool nonetheless. And, um, yeah, I don't know why there's a kamikaze guy in here. <laughs> it's strange, but hey, you know, we've got our Japanese guy in there. That's cool. I like the fact there's a stuntman as well. Nice. And, uh, and a female engineer. Did they have female engineers back in World War II? I'm not quite sure. I thought the women were doing things like making uniforms and working in, um, working on the Enigma. <laughs> Can't remember. Who knows? I like there's a speedster though. This is reminding me of the uh, board game we covered recently, the um, Grand Tour, which had um, a female racing team in that. It was all historic. That's really good. Check that out if you don't see it. I think it's finished its um, campaign now though. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, it does look good. It does look fun. It is a very interesting. I, I think you're only going to go for this if you like the card art. But the theme is there. The theme is really, really cool. And uh, you can see the art is using photography. Um, it's not using any illustrations. It's all photography based, which some people... I don't know why some people are put off by photography. But again, if it's photography on the cards and then the the board here is not photography... Not using... like. It's a kind of mix of art styles, and I don't like that. I prefer if if this set here was also taken a photo of as well. But um, it is what it is. But um, there it is on the table, and you can watch the playthrough to see if it, it's your cup of tea. But for us, social deduction team um, games are not our cup of tea. I mean, this looks very cool. I do like um, how they've done it. It is very cool. Um, uh, so, so yeah, I mean, if, you have, if you've got four in your group, you like social deductions, this is absolutely cool. And it's, it's coming in at just £34. Only going to certain countries, and I don't think Mexico's in the list according to the uh, research. We are, when it always says that, we're never in the list anyway, so for us, poo poo! Why, why are you not shipping? There's loads of games we've kickstarted from the UK and they've come to Mexico, so get on it, peeps! What's this? You're shutting off your backers. Shutting off your backers. Um, stretch goals wise, thicker paper for the rule book. Whoopee do. That's a rule book. Linen back cards, yeah, that's better. And um, a freight train and a soundscape, so the sound effect, some kind of music coming on, blah blah blah. And the track is getting 50% thicker. Um, and there's future stretch goals, but um, it's still early on in its campaign. And um, and there we go. But um, yeah, it certainly looks interesting. Stop the train. If you like, I say you need four people. That's the thing that's putting it off for me. And um, plus, our playgroup doesn't like doesn't like this type of game anyway. And um, it doesn't even ship to Mexico. So <laughs> Stop the train. We apologize. Which one should we go for next? Can you say in the chat? Anyone? Okay. In the chat, what do you want to see next? Can you pick one? We'll give you a second to pick one. I'll take a drink. Lovely day today here in Mexico. Maybe I'm quiet in the chat. Bo, you're not signed into chat. Hold on, peeps. Hold on, peeps. There you go, Bo. <laughs> Says we've got some, we've got some a few, but there we go. The testing's working. All right. All right, nothing saying in the chat, so we're gonna go to our next game, which is... I want to go to Railroad Inc. There we go. 
I've got lots of things stacked up there, as you can see. Now, roll Railroad Inc., and I'll tell you straight away, I hate Roll and Rice. I detest Roll and Rice. I abhor them. I will never play them. Never. I'll explain why. <laughs> Anyway, this is this is a very popular one, um, evidently, and it's seven thousand backers. Oh my goodness me, they've got fans out there for Roll and Right, and I don't understand them at all. First, it's it's like doing a crossword in a newspaper, or doing Sudoku from a newspaper. It's like one of those puzzle books that you get when you're traveling on a train because you're bored and you've got a pen. That's what it reminds me of and it, oh, the nostalgia of that is why I don't like these games because writing on the board, oh. <laughs> it's more of a nostalgia thing, which is why I'm put off by them. Um, the closest we've come to this is Clip Cut Parks because that is a roll and cut and it feels like arts and craft, which is cool. But Railroad Inc. is a classic roll and write, and um, if you like roll and writes, it's you know it could be fantastic for you. And um, hey, look, it's got a nice solo board. I do like the look of this purple, it lovely teleport expansion. Weird, isn't it? You'll see this from a box. They've got like a Kickstarter exclusive box. That's really nice. But it says you're going to roll your way into the future with this one. So that's nice because this here of like old classic trains of 100 years ago. Um, Thomas the Tank Engine era. Make it more modern and they have done that indeed. It's coming in different colours which is neither here or there. We prefer the green one because I'm Irish and it's got the, the uh, green. And the gold of the Irish flag there, very nice. <laughs> Biased here. And um, yeah, the custom dice as well, they look they look nice, you know, and it's like a superior quality um, compared to most roll and rights. It's got the nice fold on the board as well, which gives it good quality and, um, and all that stuff. Uh, these dry racing markers, you know, it's got railroad ink on them, which is nice, but they're still generic in the form, I think, anyway. Um, here's the yellow one, if you prefer that. It's more golden color. Um, I don't know, the, the green one just looks better than these, in my opinion, anyway. Um, it's funny, though, because on these cards, gold cards, it's, it's houses them down here, it's... Cacti. Desert gold cards? What are the ones up here? Forest gold cards are not as nice as... Anyway. Um, stretch goals that they've been doing. The Pluck Man. This is a cool die. Look at that. So they are pushing some cool stuff here. And they've got these lake cards and lava cards. What's going on here? Another custom... Look at this one. Tetro dice. Tetro, I don't, can't make that out there. Tetro, no, I don't know what that says. <laughs> These stretch girls look phenomenal, and this is why it's come to Kickstarter to really push the boat out. They've got their fan base from retail, and um, yeah, look at this Galactic Invaders expansion. Super cool stuff is happening here. I mean, this is rolling right on steroids here. It's just wicked, isn't it? Yeah, you can see the tiny boxes here, and um, it obviously is a beloved franchise now. It really is cool. Um, but yeah, drawing your railroad thing here just doesn't float my boat. And um, again, it's that nostalgia thing that I, I don't really like either. And um, But there you go. Roll and write. It's just, it's, it, you're going to have to blow me away with a roll and write to get me interested, but... Hey, it is looking cool. We're going to get down to this box. We want to check. Look at this giant box here. <laughs> this is the storage box, and it's huge, isn't it? And what's interesting here is 
that it's not that expensive, is it? You can play with up to 12 players. Um, I like this one where you got coloured ones. Now it's getting better. I prefer coloured ones than black. Who wouldn't? Uh, future dice. Look at all these cool dice that they've got going for it. I mean, this is very cool. The giant storage box is mega cool. We love this purple one as well with the future one on it, the expansion pack. And um, you can see here that the whole franchise collection comes out. What is it with train games and collections? Railroad Inc. You've got the 18xx game franchise and you've got the ticket to ride franchise what is it with collectors and railroad games oh I'm, I've not got that <laughs> I've not got that fan thing <laughs> but despite me not liking this genre of game it looks very cool look at this epic boards <sighs> yeah so this is like pimped up for Kickstarter. The retail game hits Kickstarter and it's doing a miracle for people that love it because you come here and you just go, oh my god, look at all they're doing for us. Look at this, the game we love, they're doing all this. Oh, yep. And um, this digital stuff, I will never play a board game on digital. You can forget about it, mister. Forget about it. It's too much. It's in the, in the same vein, I won't play a computer game board game. I won't play a board game on the computer, and I won't play a board game of a computer game. <laughs> I'm funny like that, I really am. <sighs> Rainbow expansion, just look at this stuff, man. Just blowing it out of the park, and such a small team, yet they've done so much. Oh my goodness. You can tell why it's got 7,000 backers and probably more to come. 10 days to come. It, it's probably the coolest Rome right out there. Is there any cooler? Let me know. You fans out there, let me know. Is the, is the, is the one you think I should really try out? <laughs> I don't know. Railroad Inc. You'd have to pay me to play it. That's how I feel. If I was on a cruise ship and you had this and you said, I'll buy you a drink. And I, well, it'd have to be champagne because you can't get champagne on your drinks package. Uh, I might come and play it. <laughs> You'd have to twist my arm. <laughs> All right. I'm looking at this as whatever we see first. The Phantom. There we go. The Phantom, the card game. Oh, this looks like 1950s kind of costumes they've got on here. Reminds me of the original Batman. In a nice purple, super skinny tight outfit. It looks like he's going to go for a swim or something in the Olympics. Anyhow. Cool box cover. A guy on a horse with a gun. <laughs> the Phantom. It's incredible how well he's knocked it out of the park and made a game that stands toe to toe with the best card adventure game that Fantasy Flight has ever put out. Well, I'm, I'm honestly, if you've got Marvel, Marvel's like, oh my god, my brain just dis went exploded. Marvel Champions, I want to say Marvel Champions. If you've got that game, this is a shoe in isn't it? Because this is similar to it, but it's a different franchise, and it's probably one you're going to want to play. It's only got 811 backers, unfortunately, but it's blasted for its goal, and hopefully that will push it also to retail. Um, yeah, because it's similar to Marvel Champions. It really is how it plays. Uh, cooperative one to two players it's nice the art style might be throwing people off because it is like first generation comic book art 1950s and we'll see it closer as we go down now this art is nice stylized with a bow of depth of field of 
there, there's your badger. A bokeh field effect going on in the background, which is cool. This is more modern. Again, more modern here. And then, when you get to the card art, it cuts to this old school stuff. And you can get a little bit of that here. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of... Uh, <laughs> now the the player board here the art on them is great they've modernized it here but as soon as you get to the card art i mean look at it if you look at the fan fancy flight stuff the marvel champions the art they've done there is phenomenal isn't it it's just like the comic book it's modern day got that cutting edge look this stuff is going backwards and it's nostalgic i mean are the if you don't like Marvel Legends and you're over 50, is this one going to appeal to you? Because, you you know, I don't know who this art is appealing to, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So, so there we go. I mean, they modernized up the player boards. Could they not have modernized up this art? I don't know. It seems really simplistic. And this card with thunder with a white background. When have you ever seen this in a comic book? A white background. It's weird, isn't it? And uh, smouldering heat here. Do you know what it reminds me of? Big time. I'm going to have to be old to remember this. On the Amiga 500, there used to be a game called... Oh, my God. I was, oh no, it's gone from my brain. What's going on? <laughs> no, it wasn't the Amiga. It was older than that. The Atari ST. The Atari ST, when you, you're a survivor on a plane and you, it's like a survival game, a really old game. This is the kind of imagery it's flashing me back to. The Atari ST. That's like circa 1987 or something like that. Oh my God. Um, if I remember that, I will tell the editor. So if you're watching this in the edit, I'll put it up here with some screenshots of that game, if you're lucky. <laughs> You've got to be old. You've got to be at least 40 to know what I'm talking about. So any young peeps watching, apologize. But that's what this old art reminds me of. It really does. Um, it was an interesting video game because at the beginning, if you had a rope... If you had a rope, could you build the rope bridge? And if you didn't, uh, one of your characters wouldn't survive. I don't know. It had some like survival things. It was really cool for the time. Anyhow. Um, so yeah, weird, weird art. Um, kind of old school art that I it, to enjoy old school stuff, you've got to be nostalgic about it. And sadly, it isn't. This computer game is building back into my mind. It's black. I think it was black and white on the Atari ST. <laughs> Tokens, yes. Rule book. What is it with this cover of the rule book? It looks like this is a rule book for chess or something. It's very weird. It doesn't even compute with the the Phantom the card game. This does it. It's weird as heck. <laughs> Now, stretch goals wise, yes, better card quality gone to 300 GCM, great. Um, achievements though, this is cool to get achievements in the game. It's a funny thing, achievements, isn't it? It came into the video games there about 10 years ago. And it's almost like side goals to when you're replaying it to try and test you, and it's like a. But it is quite cool, it's like a tertiary. A tertiary goal that you're trying to do also and can really test you these um, achievements so it is good to see um, loot tables this is cool loot tables for each adventure that gives you a chance to get something extra each time you defeat an enemy so yeah cool double story rewards this is cool as well um, I have no no doubt this game is, is very good. You know, Radho loves it. He certainly does love it. Um, for me, though, the art style is putting me off. And really, what I want to see with this kind of genre of 
he's pushing into Dark Horse Comics is where I'd want to see it go. Um, that would be cool because they've got so many interesting licenses with Dark Horse and I'm pretty sure they could snap these up. Um, but, but there you go, something sold out. Signed stuff probably. But um, there we go, that is the Phantom. The card game. The, the art is putting people off, I think. You could have modernized it, like modernized this stuff on the cover. And um, it would have maybe pushed more back as well. Hey, you know. Um, you've probably got enough there to go into retail and we wish you luck. Will there be an expansion and stuff like that in the future? Who knows, you know. I would prefer it if it went on to a different franchise. And um, even if you did like the, the Wolf Among Us, that would be cool to do that. And, um, and maybe some Dark Horse stuff that peeps don't know about. That would be epic too. Anyway, there's the Phantom. Oh yeah. What are we going to next? What are we going to next? See you, Nadia! Oh, we got Florio in the chat. A really hard name. <laughs> Hi there, Flor. Florivo. Hi there. How are you doing today, Florio? Which country are you from? This is just between me and Florio in the chat. I hope everyone's enjoying themselves. Sea of Nadia. Oh, uncover treasure. Smuggle goods. Con convert resources and be the best pirate in the Sea of Nadia. Well, first, firstly, the box doesn't tell me it's pirate. I mean, we've got a red flag up on this, haven't we? What's a red flag all about? Um, so yeah, it is a pirate game. This is another pirate game. There's so many pirate games. If you like pirate games, Coming right after the live show is the Versus series, Adventures in Neverland, Sea of Legends. Oh yeah, putting them head to head in a nice short form video. Uh, <laughs> it's actually quite funny. I, I watched it back and it was cool from the edits, so I do hope you enjoy it. Head to head. Pirate games. Yeah, we've got another pirate game here. Whoa! Now, not doing too much at the minute. I mean, it only came out a few days ago, so it's um, getting towards its goal. It's not got a pirate name, it's not got a pirate look on the box. And you've got like this admiral mark here. Roll dice, assign the dice of dice placement, take turns, end round. Now the board in the middle is really strange, isn't it? I mean, it's a weird sea map, and um, to have land all the way around the outside almost, it looks like a lake. It is bewitching why they've done that. The player cards here, look, look terrible. Look at this brown, why are you choosing Brown here, and that woman here, she looks like a Quaker teacher. A Quaker, is that what they're called? I can't remember. The, the boats here, they um, they almost look like an Eskimo boat with a sail. Does that even make sense? Is that daft? <laughs> anyway, um, Florio, though, he's from France, near Versailles. Ooh, very nice. Yeah, Florio, I'm uh back from COVID-19. I recovered about a week ago, but when you've got COVID-19, it takes almost an extra week to recover because um, COVID-19 affects your sleep. And when you come out of it, it's difficult to sleep longer than four hours and it's, it gets stretched to five, six, seven, and back to eight. So yeah, you need like a recovery of a week after COVID. <sighs> Anyhow, try telling that to your wife because my wife didn't understand that at all. 
these corners on the board here, um, you've got like this big stack of them here to change the corners, which is why they put this on the board here. Um, it would have been nice just to have a square map and have these as a side, at the side of the board or something. It's it's this integral bit of it. Um, I do like these cards though, the dead man's chest. They look cool. Got the big disc with it as well. There's a big disc thing going on in this game. They're calling them compasses. Um, so the art, yeah, in each card has a different background, which is what I like. I don't like a similar background. Sea of Legends <laughs> with a similar background. Ha ha ha! Asymmetric Captain Powers here. Um, this douche here in the green does not look like a pirate, does he? Or anyone that would be on a ship. He looks like he works in a library. He's a weird art, it really is. Um, in fact, the, the art is weird, isn't it, overall? And this wood background just... Um, this chicky dude here with hair from 1960s, weird. These are these boats. They've, they've gone there to put cubes on. If you look at the Kickstarter of um, Epic, Tiny Epic Pirates, they have boats that can c cover these and they look really cool. And that's in a very small box game. So get rid of these flat Eskimo boats and go for a real boat. Look at, look at Tiny Epic Pirates and see what they've done. I do like these message in a bottle though, that's a cool idea. And it's got its own custom die for that, really nice. These chests are kind of cool as well. Um, I don't think you're rolling this dice, I think you're just changing its value as you're going round, which is, which is okay, I guess. Now you see this aisle here with the stone arch, looks really cool. Is it that? Is it that? Because at the minute, this, this isometric view is not selling the board, and they should have a big top-down, bird's-eye view, view of the board in detail, because it's difficult to pick it out. Anyway, this, this render here, which it looks like is coming from the board, it looks very nice. Um, now you'll check it out in the, in the uh, videos to see the playthroughs. It is... It is okay. My, my concerns is the art and the, the board look is the thing that's not selling it. And certainly the boats, which could be done better. It's, you know, you can, your competition is doing it for a, around about the same price as you. 50 bucks. Now, the Tiny Epic Pirates is doing more than what you're doing in this Kickstarter. And I think that is a big thing. An Epic Pirates doing more for less, has better components and better art. So, hmm. The cards, though, I do like the cards. Come on, stretch goals, what are you? <laughs> what are you? Yeah, and they're doing live streams. They've got calendar dates here which is nice to do so you can find out dead man's card yes funded of course new compass new message in a bottle nothing on quality upgrades nothing on miniatures instead of your flat boats the canoes a ca the canoes the word came to me the eskimo canoe Alright, anyway, there's Sea of Nadia. The box doesn't look like it's a pirate game. The name doesn't look like it's a pirate game. And that is a bit of a problem for it. And of course, you've come out at the same time as Tiny Epic Pirates. And you've got those other two pirate games. I mean, it's just pirate heaven at the minute. But Adventures in Neverland, fantastic. Sea of Legends, fantastic. Tiny Epic Pirates, fantastic. And then you come to the, this one. Oh, you're in fourth place. In fourth place. Oh. 
All right, let's go back to our screen as we take a little break and we go to the chat. Florio says he's saving money for Nemesis Lockdown. Yes, that is coming out soon. And um, Hell is a huge bullet. Oh my God, Hell is a huge bullet to the wallet. Tell me about it. Florio just want getting minimum pledge for these things. I'm telling you, we're gonna have a, we've got to have a dry month. If if this year, it's Kickstarter's all year. It will be the most incredible year on Kickstarter. It really will. But um, if we get a flood of retail games on Kickstarter as well, and you know that might also cloud things a little bit. But at the minute, there's not been a week where there's a, you know since since this channel started in in February, there's not been one week where I would not back two Kickstarters. It's been that good since February. And this is in COVID-19 when no one's got any money. So, so yeah, um, Nemesis Lockdown and Hell, they certainly will have late pledges, so don't worry about that. They're, they're gonna have, you know, they're not coming for another year, so um, strategize it that way. And at least when you one dollar pledge it, you, you understand the shipping price because that's been a bit of a concern about shipping as they change their prices um, when you when you finish the pledge so anyway that's my suggestion you, you don't win anything by full pledging that's what I'm saying it's a less risk if you minimum pledge on these things all right we've done the big ones we're coming to the little indies now and send it send it send it Send it. Where are you? Send it. The strange name. <laughs> Isn't it a strange name for a mountain biking game? Is this, if anybody watches this that likes mountain biking, what has Send It got to do with it? I don't understand this name. <laughs> Anyway, we can see the board here. It's got these standees. It's got this small board. It's an indie game, by the way, indie. You've got these large square things on the board here with a track on the board that's going around. And, um, yeah. They've busted their goal, which is good. 588 backers. How cool would it be to get miniatures of the bikes? No, Flam Rouge! Flam Rouge! That has minis for bikes. Um, but you know, this is the first... This is the first creation and it's... Uh, but I mean, look at this. Sixty dollars! Sixty dollars! For this! For this, are you kidding me? Standees, bits of card for the tape. This better be incredible when we go down. Let's have a look at this. Because you've got heavy competition on the market. Look at these dies. Ooh, are you kidding me? They look like stickers on cubes. Oh. Send it, small box, at $60. A jewel layered board! Does it does it matter if it's dual layered if you're just putting them on the top? It's a little bit extreme that. And if you jewel if you're putting this in those big discs, how hard is it to get them out? Ooh! Hello? No, we're not Sea of Nadia. We're Send It! <laughs> What's going on? Send it, send it. We had this crash last live stream. It's weird, isn't it? What's going on? Microsoft, get on it with Microsoft Edge. Back down to the dual layer board. Um, so if... If you've got to take these out, have you got to turn the board upside down is my concern. Because 
Surely these discs have to be very thick to go in here if you're taking them out. They do have this big hole here for your thumb, though. <laughs> now, the, the player cards, the rider cards, they look nice. I do like that. I like the little art style they've got going here. I do like the different arts they've got for the different bikes doing little tricks. That looks cool. I'm guessing the standees are okay, you know. They could do a stretch go for acrylic ones if they really want to do standees, which the acrylic ones are cool because they're translucent. So it, it, they just look way better if you, if you look at that. Golden burrito looks like a bullet, doesn't it? Burrito should have colour, right? They should have food coming out. These training dies look horrendous. They do. The riding dies. This has to be work in progress. Like th this is not final. It should say this here because if that is, that's oh. And you're spending what? Sixty. You can get custom dice for a dollar at cost. So. What are these? Ten cent for these? Oh my god, what's going on? 20 inch by 20 inch is the board size. Quad fold. <sighs> okay. Now it does have a D20. This is, makes it interesting, isn't it? And it says sending. It's the sending dies. This verb is a verb for send for mo mountain biking. What? Yep, so each each character definitely has asynchronous to them. You got this lady here, Carrie, two fitness and a one balance. Uh, Derek here is good in the air, two for tech. So this stuff is interesting how these are going to work across the board. And um, it is cool. Now, an, Tabletopia, if they put it on Tabletopia, this, this means, you know, We've got confidence in our in our body, in, in, in our mechanics. So, yeah, this is cool. This shouldn't even be a stretch goal. This should be non-stretch goal so people can come and check it out. Because then they can get a better informed version of your game. Because, for example, on Tabletopia, you can put what your dice are going to look like better than these things. And um, and there it is. 3D minis coming! Oh, look at this! 70,000. Oh. Yeah, so what I suggest is Tabletopia, drop this from your stretch goals. Get some social goal, goals out there, so spread the word and get some images of these 3d minis and advertise them so we know what these um, are going to look like that's going to tempt the fate and we need a better view of your board and stuff like that but yeah we do like we do like the concept of it and it does look interesting play for if you watch the videos it is nice and um yeah, the, the, the social stretch goals are these kind of photos, but when I say social stretch goals, I'm talking about liking our Facebook group, thumbs up on our uh, BGG site, um, you know, Instagram, whatever it is. Those goals, those goals that promote it um, on social media, that's what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, you can see the prototype in here, it is homebrew. And it is pretty cool as they're going to different things. And um, yeah, here the here the peeps. They are mountain mountain bike enthusiasts, and they've put their heart and soul into this game. And um, it definitely needs more research, peeps. So get on it. They're certainly active with updates, and um, and yeah, it just needs to. Needs to get more out there, but for first mountain biking board game, it does look interesting, asynchronous to the people. The board again, you need to show this off better, and um, yeah, that'd be cool. And even doing a um, 
live Q&A and a playthrough from the devs would be nice. Also, especially as you're a mountain bike enthusiast, it would be cool for you to play and tell us some interesting facts about mountain biking because we get two things from the one video that would be interesting. Alright, we're going to take a break. Where's our photo stuff? Look at the chat. Oh, send me a message. Uh, Florio says... Um, Dodo Dinos. Yeah, we back that one. It's fucking fantastic, man. Um, the Dodo Dinos name. <laughs> What? Yeah, it's difficult to remember the name of that one, isn't it? Dinos Riding Dodos. Dodos Riding Dinos. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, the mountain bike one. Um, I don't know. It could surprise people still, the mountain bike one. We'll see what they're doing in their campaign. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that one. Um, detestable Game. Detestable Game, which was awesome. Detestable game. Ooh, what what is this? What is it? Do you know, um, Florio? The chat crashed. The chat crashed. Bo, let's put you back in. This all gets edited out. All gets edited out. The chat crashed. <laughs> if you've got any questions for for Bo, you can ask him away. By the way. Or you can ask him to ask me anything. That's also cool. Detestable game. I'm going to write this one. De Bo, hang on. What detestable game? What detestable game? We're on our last box. It's coming on for our last ten minutes, so we, we have a minutes break all this gets cut from it Florio what's the detestable game please we have a minute we have a minute we have a minute sometimes my viewers mention games and I'm like no idea what that is my friend <laughs> Dodo's riding dinos oh that's the company detestable games I can't remember the company's name. <laughs> remember the titles, yeah, but Dodo's Riding Dinos was fantastic. Oh my god, those stretch goals knocked it out of the park. Wow. Ooh. I'm, I bet you my editor leaves all this stuff in. She never cuts stuff out of the live show. She loves all this, like, break stuff. Anyhow. Here we are. Look at this. <laughs> Now, first of all, this is the second time we've done a sport title. A live show last time. What was it looking at? Uh, baseball. It was looking at baseball and it was very expensive. Here we have NFL International, the mini football league. And um, the little minis look cool. I like these ones because they... They're shiny. They are shiny. These ones, though, look like they're 3D printed and they're not shiny. So, yeah, I like the, the glossy finish that we've got on these. Hopefully, it'll come as that. What's even weirder is it's an American football game coming from Germany. <laughs> Man, you, you think this game would be coming from the US of A. Do they play American football in Germany? What's going on? Yeah, so the, the players look kind of funny, don't they? I do like this. The shoulder pads don't look as buff as American footballers do. It is big though. It's over a meter long, so it is a big board. It's not a board, is it? The playing field, this thing that they're rolling out. We do like the grass on it, though. It is nice. It certainly is nice. Um, 
Now, you can see it's kind of dexterity here where you're trying to fire the ball and if it hits your character, that means he caught the ball. So there's your first down. You can get within... You can get within range and do a field goal. There should be a rule, though, that you can't take a field goal from 80 yards away. That's ridiculous. No American football player has fired a field goal from 80 meters or yards. 80 yards away. This is stupid. So put a rule in that you can't do a field goal from maybe 40 yards or something like that. And um, it, it might be... You could handicap the field goal by putting in a lighter ball so it was more difficult to hit it from range. That would be cool. So have a, have a ball for throwing and have a ball for field goal. Have two different balls. That'd be very cool. Um, <clears throat> I love this right on the head. Bushka. But... Here it bounced, and it looks like you, it's okay if it bounces to get the touchdown, which again is a little bit not in the rules of American football. If, if the ball hits the floor and you still catch it, that, that's not legal, is it, within American football? <laughs> and then after you've got a touchdown, you get to take a, a field goal. But look at this field goal. It's like... Over a hundred yards! It's silly. It really is silly. Bring it down the table and um, put a... Even if it was foam. So you just couldn't get enough range on it. I do like you hear he's playing it in the pub. <laughs> uh, excuse me, mate, but you two are taking up room for eight people and there's nowhere else to sit. You're just taking up all the table. Could you F off? Like, this is hogging the pub. It really is it's that big. That that is my impression of someone in the north of England, because up the north of England they don't take no crap in pubs. Look at how much room you're taking up. This is a bit odd as well, like there's a Hail Mary coming in here for this character. <laughs> Look at that. But yes, the fumble, he hits his own character and it spins off to one of them but that should turn if, it, if, the, if the ball hits the opposite person that should be a turnover right that should be a interception or a um, ball turnover or whatever it's called I forget my vocabulary with American football but yeah the interception if it hits them straight away um, a foul is <laughs> if you move the kicker towards it and it hits over that's class of the foul now, of course, these peeps are the devs and they've been practicing, which is why they can get these Hail Marys and stuff like that. But, um, grazes the top, so is that a fail? Yeah, it must knock over your character. Now, it's got Standard Edition here and Kickstarter Edition and they've not got prices here, so let's rock and roll! Man, why are these expensive? Why are all these sport games expensive? 80 euros, that is pushing 85 dollars. Oh. Now the Kickstarter, this one's gonna blow your mind. It's gonna blow your mind. It's it's 60 euros extra. That's 70 dollars for a glow-in-the-dark team. Is that what it is? <laughs> I don't think it's glowing the dark, but you can have a green team. Let me just say that again. Seventy dollars. Seventy dollars for this. I don't think you're missing much by not going for that. I really don't. Um, now, I think one of the reasons it's expensive is that this is getting made in Germany. No problem with that. And um, hopefully it's got German quality to it. But yeah, it does look interesting. And I do like American football. I do like baseball. Like most of the American sports, it is looking cool. And uh, the video here is actually showing them doing a playthrough. And it look when you see them doing a playthrough, it doesn't look like it's taking... 
10 minutes. I mean, it is a long game. You're in it here for the whole match of American football, and the score, I think, when it finishes is like 40 to 50 or something like that, so it's, uh, it's tight. Obviously, you can scale this down, though. You, you can do um, five minutes per quarter if you wanted to. You can totally make it shorter if you wish, and I'm sure kids would love this. Um, it says estimated delivery December, which is great, if you can definitely confirm that. And the only problem is it's only certain countries, and when it says that, it means it's not Mexico! <laughs> what is it with these peeps coming on Kickstarter and not doing it? It's because it's their first time Kickstarter, and these first time Kickstarters just haven't done research in delivery partners. That's it. That's all it is. It just shows inexperience when they don't ship it to Mexico. So, boo! Boo hoo! Alright, that is the... Um, that is MFL International looking fantastic. Really, it really is looking great. Um, let's just hope the minis become glossy like this and the balls different balls for the field goals peeps come on can't do a field goal from a hundred yards away got to stick to American football rules a little bit tighter because I'm pretty sure there's Americans laughing at that when you do it across the table it just seems ridiculous Din, 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 din. with three minutes left let's have a look at what's out there hell <laughs> ending in two days and oh my god that game check it out <laughs> some are calling it the tainted grail of mythic maybe but it's viking for one and it's more vibrant yes the player cards on that look phenomenal and you've got to paint those minis with colour I'm afraid but it does look very cool choose your own adventure style with legacy components boxes you'll open through the campaign Ooh, get your minimum pledges on and guess what it's $135 shipping to Mexico yeah <laughs> what the hell is that 135 euros shipping to Mexico I'm just going to get it shipped to Ireland, and when I go back to Ireland, I'll pick it up. That's the that's the strategy with hell, because <laughs> the shipping to Europe is nice and cheap. Florio has to go. You take care, Florio. Thanks for tuning in. Great for chatting. All good fun. Wish you well in El Francais. Tapeworm, this bonkers game, which. Um, we did a video on this. No idea why it's got this so many backers, but it has exploded. Uh, he made it for his niece, so it's like for a kid's. It's like for a kid's game. There's tiny epic pirates. We can see these 3D ships with the cubes on. Yeah, railroad ink. We looked at. Uh, looking absolutely amazing. With so much custom dice. Totally, totally cool. Um, Ethia. Ethia is going to be the next in the series of. Uh, versus. We're going to do Ethia versus that game has gone out of my brain because I, I don't like it. <laughs> we'll see it. When we go down, I'll, I'll tell you what we're doing with. It's the down list. Bullet. Bullet. We're backing Bullet. Why? Because it's looking great. We love Bullet. It got Kickstarter of the week. It got Kickstarter of the week. Yes. It beat Tiny Epic Pirates. We did a vote, the four of us at the station, and Sea of Legends got eight out of eight, and Pirates got seven out of eight. So it came close, but Bullet, you won! Woohoo! Um, this is the last plug. As soon as we finish the live stream, Adventures in Neverland versus Sea of Legends, we are doing it the first in our versus series. So I hope you enjoy that. Power Rangers, we're not looking at you at all. We think it's a horrendous game, and the pledge to buy in is absurdly expensive. Uh, War of Whispers, Dale of Merchants, free, didn't make the cut. If we have a dry week, we may cover one of these. 
this week, but well, it's not going to be a dry week, is it? Who are we kidding? Um, Tiny Ninjas, we don't like you, I, but we didn't want to look at you. We didn't want to look at you. Shoal. Oh. I don't know what's going on with Shoal. I, do you know what, Shoal? I, you might just want to cancel the campaign at this stage and come back when Kickstarter's not so incredibly saturated with incredible projects. Uh, there we go. A lot of these we covered on last time's live show. You can check that out um, from our channel. And I can tell you now, Escape, Roll and Write, we're looking at that. That'll be tomorrow's video because, frankly, we love Queen Games and that Kickstarter lit my face up it really did I had so much fun it really did so yeah got a little preview there dawn shade there we go ethia versus dawn shade that is a must um battle that we need to put them two together because they're so alike but one is clearly head and shoulders above the other it's going to be an obliteration that battle <laughs> it really is early chronicles Fantastic mini game doing fantastic. Um, get more backers. Come on, Ulia. Where, where is Pete? Why are you not getting it? Send it. Look at send it. It's gonna overtake Ula Chronicles. Oh my goodness, this is looking great. Um, yeah, so there's got some good stuff here. Um, we're going down here to some stuff that seems to have trouble f going up, but yeah, there's some it's totally some cool stuff here. And uh, we've got a sneaky suspicion that Frenemy Pastry Party is going to be coming next live stream. <laughs> yeah. So, o Oko Hunters, that might be coming next live stream as well. We'd like to look at that too. I'm just going down the bottom of the list here of what we may do next week. Um, it all depends though, you know, schedules change so much with depending what comes out in the week. But, um, is there anything I want to make a note of before we finish? That's down here. That's um, yeah, Bible Brawl. It's a cool card game, and it's only got 200 backers. Come on, man! We did a video on it. You can check it out. We've got a highlight reel on it too. If you just want the quick um, vertical slice of it. Um, but you know, there we go. We're getting into the the retail end of <laughs> Kickstarter. And um, not much happening down here, is the It's like, poo, poo This is the bottom of the barrel, the bottom of the barrel. What are you doing on Kickstarter? Um, well, there you go. All right, let's pop back. Well, there you go. That is the live show. Thank you so much for watching. We're a little bit over time. We went, ooh, we went over 60 minutes. We had a little bit of fun there at the end. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, yep, we covered Sea of Nadia. We covered the Phantom, the card game. Send it. Railroad Inc., MFL International, and Stop the Train. It was a good live show. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching it. If you're watching this on the edit, thank you so much for watching. If you've got this far on the edit, then you rock. I'll tell you now. Um, We'll be back here next Sunday for a live show. Um, check the times out. The international times. I have to come here for that. It's on the banner. For those peeps that are watching on mobile phone, you see you don't get to see it, but you only see this on the desktop. We've got a live show banner up here every Sunday. It's 11 a.m. PST, 12 2 p.m. EST, 6 p.m. GMT. There you go. Um, here it is. Our uh, to battle. It's unlisted. As soon as we, as soon as we clock off in the next 10 seconds, I'm going to put this live. So look out for that. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching the live show. And um, whatever you're doing this week, I hope you have a great week. And look forward to. At so many cool stuff on the channel this week so yeah thank you for watching i'm listic paddy this has been kickstarter radio 102.4 and um, yeah you take care stay safe and bye 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 for now